Say hello to the new SwimOutlet.com. Enhanced navigation, larger, higher resolution imagery, more filtering and search capability so you can find what you need faster. As always, low price guarantee and free shipping on $49. The redesigned SwimOutlet.com. Dive in, say hi. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, May 15th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me today in the Finice Monitor will be Annika Dries. She just closed out her college career by helping the Stanford Cardinal win their third national title in women's water polo in four years. And Annika joins us right now via Skype from Stanford. Annika, it's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. <laughs> so uh, I know Stanford's not a big party school, you're not known for that, but I would imagine there's been a lot of celebrating since um, Sunday. Um, yeah, no, I mean, our team, uh, this is a special moment for us, and uh, we definitely wanted to come back and share it with, with our community here. Now, last year you lost to USC in that epic championship match. I mean, it was quadruple overtime. You guys, um, you know, were just back and forth. It just seemed like it was never going to end. Uh, what effect did uh, the loss have on the team for the rest of 2013 and then for this season? Um, I think it really just helped us uh, reevaluate what it means to be hungry and what it means to, to go for it um, every single day. Um, whether it's the first day of the fall last year when we all came together um, and said, you know, we're not going to let this happen again, um, all the way up until our final meeting uh, before the game. Um, I think that we had a, a full group effort in terms of everyone's mentality this year and it was really exciting um, to have that momentum going into the final this year. I would imagine so. Uh, you guys got to play against USC at the end of March. Were you guys out for blood getting a little bit of revenge? Um, that was actually one of my uh, favorite games this season uh, just because everyone the energy that was on that day. Um, it was actually spring break leading up to it, and uh, everyone was just so focused in on on, uh, on on the game plan against USC and just coming back mentally against them. And um, we had a really fun fun time playing five on six that that game. And I think that's been uh, a really a testament of our team this whole season is our five on six. So to have that kind of started that that trend. So when USC got knocked out of the championship final by UCLA, did that change the mindset on the Stanford team at all? Honestly, we were ready to play either team um, and excited to. Obviously, you know the emotion of playing USC at home uh, would have been really fun as well, but we were just as excited to play U UCLA. Um, both are great teams and uh, both had great seasons. So in the championship match, UCLA is up 5-3 to three at, at the half. Any nerves on your part on whether you guys could be able to pull off the win? Um, honestly, I think the, the, the coolest thing was staring into everyone's eyes at that, um, at that halftime uh, get-together. JT didn't say much. He said, stick to our game plan and, uh, you know, basically, like, let's get the next five-on-six stop. And... Um, and our offense will come. And I think that's been uh, a really cool thing to see this team evolve from uh, in February when we went down on UCLA, same situation, three goals, and we weren't able to come back um, that game. And to see the progress this team's made over the past couple months uh, and to finally culminate in this final game was just so exciting. And I, I couldn't have asked for you know a, a better second half. You were named the tournament MVP and by no small part for your three goals in, the, at the, in that second half of the championship game. What clicked for you and for the team to be able to rally and, and be able to win that national title? I think, you know, we've had a lot of meetings over these past couple of days going over different moments um, of the game. Uh, I think there's so many little things that go into a championship game that happen outside the pool, um, that happen before the game. Um, but specific moments during the game, uh, we had a key five on six stop. Maggie flew in, blocked one at X1. That really got me going. Um, Kaylee, her energy just the entire game and her relentlessness uh, and just all these other individual plays that helped inspire each other, I think, um, was really kind of what made us believe we could do it. And, um, you know, we watched a lot of 
game film going into that and, and knew exactly uh, what they were going to bring second half. And uh, we knew what it, what it was going to take. You were part of the USA water polo team that won the gold medal at the Olympics in 2012. What was the more intense game, winning that gold medal in London or winning this past Sunday? Um, I think they're both really uh, obviously intense games. I think that the world stage, obviously with the Olympics, there's a lot more eyes on you. Um, but the connection that I felt with my teammates um, on both these journeys that I've been on uh, have been uh, really powerful. And I think I will remember each one. Um, for those moments and I'm really excited uh, for the next journey as well. Yeah, so now you're done with your collegiate career and obviously, you know, we look at swimmers and it's, you know, they just continue to train for the Olympics and, and not really any kind of break in kind of the way that they live their lives. It's a little bit different for water polo players, isn't it? Um, in what sense? In the Sorry. sense of, you know, just being able to continue to, to train. I mean, do will you still be able to um, train at Stanford, or will you have to go elsewhere to, to continue for 2016? Right. I think I think what it comes down to it is the uh, the team and chemistry aspect of of our sport, and um, each individual has to bring together their skills, which you know that can happen at Stanford, that can happen at um, all all the other schools. But when it comes down to it, um, you do need to have a group together for a long period of time, and um, and commit to something. So. Uh, that is something uh, for the future of our of our national team program and for our Stanford program is important. So, where do you think you will be staying at Stanford for the next couple of years? Um, I I'm actually deciding that right now. I know uh, come 2015 we will be in full time training, uh, but for right now I'm just focusing on graduating and uh, and you know taking that next step. Yeah, a degree a degree from Stanford is always a big deal. What are you going to earning your What are you earning your degree in? Uh, human biology. Human biology, is that, I uh, mean, you're going to be a doctor? What, what's the uh, field so. you're thinking about? <laughs> I have to take my MCATs first, but. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's more intense than any water polo game, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of water polo players who um, finish their college careers like you have and are going to continue to train for the Olympics. Some of them go over to Italy and, and or in Europe and continue to play water polo there because it's, you know, they can earn money playing water polo there. Um, is that changing at all in the United States? Is, is Are the opportunities improving in terms of being a post-grad water polo player here? Um, you know, I, I think water polo is, is changing in, in terms of the competitive um, you know, opportunities available here in the U.S. and abroad. Um, for me personally, I've been so focused on, you know, this end of this journey um, with the Stanford team that uh, I haven't fully thought about what I want, you know, what exactly is next for me. Um, but I do know it's changing, and I do know that there's just a lot of young players coming up and proving themselves uh, on a daily basis. And so um, I think that's really exciting for our sport. And um, given that there are more college uh aged players uh, competing and training for this next quad, it, it might change the, the opportunities and what is really um, going to happen with that. So it's exciting. Yeah, and, and you definitely can't be faulted for not really knowing what you're doing. It, it's always up in the air. No, I mean, every college student, even they're, whether an athlete or not, just never really knows what they're going to do until that option presents themselves. So you've got plenty of time, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just enjoying the moment for right now. <laughs> that's definitely the way to live. Um, well, before we let you go, Annika, we're going to submit you to the final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the Morning Swim Show. A couple of the questions have a, we, we usually have a, are swimming related, but we'll change them to water polo questions for you. So the first question is, um, what's the best time to play a water polo game? Is it 9 a.m., 3 p.m., or 9 p.m.? 9 p.m., under the lights. Wow, okay. Late at night. Late night game for you. Um, what's a career or job you would most like to try? Um, probably being a doctor, being a physician. Okay. And on the flip side of that, what's a career or job you would not like to try? Um, party planning. I'm not a good party planner. Okay. Nope. Um, what's, <laughs> what's a rule in water polo that you would like to change or add? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Um, Honestly, uh, maybe something something to do with um, the defender position and um, how 
maybe how something is called uh, at the two meter position. Uh, I think there could be there could be another role there for how aggressive that position is. Okay. Last question for you, Annika. Where would you like to go for vacation? Ooh, um, probably Paris, France. I got to spend a few days there uh, after the Olympics, and um, I'd love to go back. It was an amazing city, and I'd definitely love to go back and explore it a little more. All right, well, hope that opportunity comes to you. Um, thanks so much for joining us, Annika. Congratulations again on not just winning the title this past Sunday, but a great college career. We're looking forward to uh, seeing how the next two years pan out. All right, thank you so much. My pleasure. All right, so that's going to do it for today's edition of the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to stay with SwimmingWorld.com for all news from all aquatic sports throughout the year. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.